Hi everyone. I hope you and your families are well as we move further into the fall term and shorter days. Today, I'll cover a quick update on our BCIT strategic plan, some exciting news related to BCIT's sustainability vision, and most importantly, a thank you to some of you who've been critical in helping students return to campus safely for a BCIT applied learning experience. We've received support from the Board of Governors on a one-year extension of BCIT's strategic plan to 2023. This doesn't mean the fundamentals of our current plan will change significantly. We're keeping the key initiatives already built in, but over time we'll expand our focus to ensure BCIT plays a recognized leadership role in the digital transformation and other opportunities accelerated by this pandemic. BCIT's role is now and will continue to be critical to the ongoing availability of skilled workers to support the province's recovery and resilience. We'll provide more information following board approval, anticipate it later this year. Secondly, our sustainability vision is a key component of BCIT's strategic plan and is also widely viewed as a positive potential outcome of this pandemic and a recovery driver. We'll feature sustainability in a future video, but for now, I'll just give you a quick highlights. Dr. Jenny Moore, Director, Institute of Sustainability, and Corey Wilson, Executive Director, Indigenous Initiatives, are working very closely together to embed sustainability and indigenization throughout all facets of BCIT. They've brought forward cases of many indigenous and sustainability challenges that are deeply interconnected. You'll be hearing more about this from both Jenny and Corey in time to come. They will also be engaging across BCIT to expand indigenization and sustainability into our academic programming and schools beyond operations. BCIT is working closely with United Nations groups to help youth around the world create change locally and internationally. BCIT is also working with the International Union of Conservation of Nature, leading a working group to explore how international cities can measure their own ecological footprints. And we're working directly with 10 local municipalities to help them measure and ultimately reduce their carbon footprints. It's no wonder with Jenny's leadership, BCIT is increasingly recognized in this area. Finally, my congratulations to everyone who worked on EcoCity World Summit last year. Thanks to you, BCIT was recently recognized by the International Congress and Conference Association with the 2020 Incredible Impact Award of the legacy created through the BCIT Center for EcoCities following last year's event. I'm so proud to see our strategic plan coming to life as both sustainability and indigenization are embraced by our community and the hearts and minds of our students as well. For my third point, please join me in giving a huge shout out to the many faculty and staff in the School of Construction and the Environment. I know that many of you have leaned in over countless hours to plan and prepare various program areas for a safe return to online campus learning. I can't thank you enough. I'd like to acknowledge and introduce Kevin Wainwright, Associate Dean of Broadcast and Media Communication Programs, who's been instrumental in ensuring broadcast and media students can continue to benefit from the hands-on learning experiences safely here at the Burnaby campus. Let's watch the video highlighting this story. When COVID-19 hit, we really brought into question whether we'd be able to have any of the students back on campus. Clearly, we had to have a very comprehensive plan for the fall of 2020. The Broadcast Center has three full-time programs in journalism, radio, and TV and video production. There's over 300 active students in these programs. In the Broadcast Center, they get training in very specialized equipment and very hands-on experience. For example, in the television program, we're training the students in the studios, which is a very dynamic environment where they're working and moving around specialized equipment changing the sets and setting up the lighting in very different formats. And in radio, we even have a fully licensed CRTC FM station, Evolution 107.9, and we're required to keep that running 24-7. Given the dynamics that we have in the broadcast center, we clearly had to put in place safety protocols and engineering solutions that would allow us the flexibility we needed. So we started working on our plan back in April. First thing we did was started talking with the trades areas at BCIT. 
They were one of the first groups to be able to get back on campus and they'd done an amazing job with many of their students. We were lucky to be able to collaborate with them, especially with the joinery area, who helped us with some of our initial designs. Today the Broadcast Center has been set up into three zones for each of the programs to allow us to better have social distancing. We have one-way hallways, and where we can't have one-way hallways, we have plexiglass barriers. In the studios and in the edit suites, we have a variety of different types of plexiglass barriers that are dynamic, that we can roll around, we can move, we can reset as we need. With the Radio Arts and Entertainment program, where we have our FM station, we originally only had two studios. Now we have wired it so we have six individual studios that allows each student participating to have their own booth. Throughout the building, in the computer labs, the edit suites, the studios, and the control rooms, we have installed UV lighting for sanitizing. Each of the rooms are cleaned after each and every class has been in there, and we have sanitizing cycles throughout the day. The equipment used by the broadcast students is cleaned, disinfected, and sanitized and quarantined after each and every time it's used. Because of all the hard work, we now have the students back on campus. They're having to function under a modified environment, but they are producing television shows, broadcasting on air, and publishing online. And not only are they adhering to the COVID protocols and functioning in that environment, we've taken it a step further and incorporated COVID into the curriculum so that we're preparing students ready for industry. So they're coming out of BCIT not only job ready, but they're COVID ready. What has been accomplished in the Broadcast Center this year has been incredibly innovative. It's a tribute to what the faculty and the students at the Broadcast Center have been able to accomplish. 